just to review where we're at. We've had the block cleaned and vatted. We've had it uh, poured new Babbitt in it, sent it off to the machine shop, had all the boring and the decking and the valve seats, valve guides reworked to our specifications. We've installed and fitted the crankshaft. We, ins we installed the main shaft after cleaning up the surface, making sure that it was square, and installed the flywheel. We have no magnets on it at this time because uh, it's lighter to lift it on and off. Uh, built up our brake drum and drive plate assembly, which we put new bearings in it, line board the brake drum, two bearings, machined off the flange surface of the brake drum, machined off the installed bearing in the drive plate, center board it, and machined off the flange that mounts to the brake drum. The purpose of doing all that was so we can get the least amount of run out out here where the fourth main runs. And I find that something in the neighborhood of four to six thousandths is kind of acceptable because we have bearing clearance in there and this thing is uh, about 11 inches, 10, 11 inches long. So it does have uh, some run out up here at the top, but four to six is acceptable. And to check the run out, it's just a matter of using a dial indicator here and rotating around the flywheel, indexing the drive plate, and looking to see uh, that we do not exceed that four to six thousandths run out. Uh, our next step here is to take our flywheel take this apart basically. We'll index it so we know how it goes back together because you can put the main shaft in two different directions. The, the uh, flywheel can go on two different directions. So you've got four or five different configurations of those three parts, flange of the crankshaft, flywheel, and main shaft. We want to index them because we're happy with where we're at here and we want to put it back together. And so our next step is to, like I said, disassemble it, take the flywheel off, and uh, start working on putting our transmission magneto together, the field coil, set our gap, and build up the transmission, and put the transmission on. And after that, we'll proceed with putting in the pistons and the valves and mounting the fan, mounting, mounting the oil pan. And, and as you can see, the transmission Flywheel assembly is a lot of components. Uh, you have your brake drum, reverse drum, low speed drum, a drive plate. I've got an extra brake, uh, low speed drum here. We'll look at these gear surfaces. We're going to look for cracks in the drum. We're going to pick out the best gears that we have. So we, do, so we stand a chance of, of, of putting together a transmission that's quiet. Uh, we want to make sure that our surfaces uh, are all cleaned up and ready to go. But the clutch basket, the dry, driven gear, there's washers in it for the spacers, for setting the, setting the clearance, all of our keys, washers, spools, the spools we want to examine and make sure that they're not cracked. And uh, in the process here, I'll measure these. I'd like these all to be about the same. Uh, thickness uh, that helps out our magnets right now are not uh, charged up too awful good there is some in it so we'll go through the process of recharging our magnets uh, and build build the magnets uh, put the magnets onto the flywheel and we have a reconditioned uh, uh, rebuilt uh, field coil that we'll utilize, and of course our flywheel is a starter flywheel. The ring gear all goes on uh, with brass screws through the spools and the magnets holds the ring gear in place. Uh, we'll build that all up. We'll use a reproduction of a K.R. Wilson tool for setting the magnet heights, making sure that they are all 
fairly close proximity to each other as far as heights. We'll later install the field coil on the block and there's some shims that are utilized to get it square and, and level. The uh, ultimate goal is to end up with an air gap between the magneto uh, magnets and the field coil. Uh, you know, if I remember right, I think it's somewhere between 20 two or twenty-five thousandths to forty, forty-one thousandths. So I'll have to get the book out to refresh my memory. But we'll be looking at the bearing surfaces and making sure if we've got good bearings, I'll go ahead and reuse them. If we need new bearings, we'll pop these out, install them, and using some reamers and, and what have you, we'll go ahead and get those sized to where it all goes together as an assembly. Same thing with the triple gears. Uh, Right now we've just got old bearings in it. Uh, probably going to have to uh, replace the pins, but we'll all check and measure them to make sure. If I do, I'll just reuse these bearings as long as I got good thrust clearance. Uh, if not, we've got bearings to replace. And then the fourth main is the piece that goes onto the drive plate, and we've poured the fourth main, and we'll bore it out to size. Uh, kind of after we've finalized what all the component which which of any of these components we've got laying around here that we're going to use uh, so that's so first off I'm going to take our magnets I'm going to identify north south pole and put, put a mark on it because that's what I'll use to put it on the right right relationship when we go to charge them the other thing that I do is I visually looked can't see any cracks but I'm going to wrap them real hard up against a piece of steel and as you can hear they ring really nice and I'll go through the whole set unfortunately off camera this one kind of made a clunky sound and uh, I hit it again a little harder and you can see that there's only a little over an eighth of an inch of material even though I couldn't see the crack in it it was it was split and so it broke so this magnet needs to be replaced I like to do the orientation north-south because I don't want to reverse the magnets when I do the charging. Okay, So let's talk just briefly about what we're getting ready to do on the charging of it. And uh, This is a, a homemade uh, magnet charger. One of the guys in our clubs probably 40 years ago made it. Uh, simply wound some coils around some steel. Got a little starter button here that you can push on to Get the, get the voltage up to it, the, the current. Uh, what we use is three 12 volt batteries. They are wired in series, so we end up with 36 volts up here at our charger. Uh, and the, the charging process is really quite simple. Remember I identified my magnets. Uh, so this is my south pole. I've got this labeled to where I've got my north pole so I'm just going to bring it up here and let it hit and I might we we used to do it where we just set it on and hit the button three or four times and I have found that if I let it pull it out of my hand uh, I actually get a better uh, charge on it uh, this is a three pound piston which I think if you read in the books it says well if it'll pick up a piston it's sufficiently charged this is this block of steel that I've got here is six pounds, six point three pounds, and if I get it on there just right, I can lift that dude up, and it's going to make a liar out of me. But uh, there's six, six pounds held, so that magnet's charged, and I'm going to put a little piece of metal on it just as a keeper, and I'm going to work around here and do all sixteen magnets. You don't have to hold it on, it's just an initial, just a burst, just on off. And that one is just barely going to pick it up because I don't have much surface here. If you file that down a little bit, it would probably pick it up no problem. another six pounder just almost coming up off the table. I'm thrilled to death with it.
components to build up the magneto. Obviously the flywheel, we've recharged our magnets, uh, the spools to stand off, the clamps, washers, bolts to hold the magnets in place, and we're replacing uh, the brass screws that go down through it, and we've got a new starter ring gear. So this is going to make up the assembly of the magnets on the flywheel. And one thing that I want to check is these pins I know need to be replaced because they're real, they're pitted and rust. Just turn it back on. So if I measure the pin, I got very little wear where the, where the uh, bearing really doesn't press against, but when I measure on the wear surface, I get way undersized. So I'm going to replace the pins. And the pins can simply be driven out. They don't need to be pressed out. And they go from this side down. Uh, it is a tapered pin uh, pressed into the cast iron. So take them out from this side of the flywheel, the ring gear side, and replace them from the magnet side. But it Generally, you can just take a smack or two at them. <laughs> See, these, these had to be replaced here regardless because they're just all pitted up. Uh, uh, obviously, this thing sat with a lot of water. So, we're going to replace those pins. The pins can be driven in. Or, if you're so inclined, you can go to a press. But they're simply drove back in. I'll get a big drift pin on here, and I'm going to seat them all back down where they belong. This flywheel, so. I had uh, sandblasted and cleaned up. And uh, you can see I smeared a little gilliptol on it to make it look pretty. It's not necessary. And you'll notice that I don't have it covering everything. And that's not particular. You can shoot the whole thing or, or, or not. It's just up to you. But uh, the 16 bolts that hold the magnets on are uh, 3 8 24. So I've got a uh, uh, tap. And I'm just going to start it and clean out those threads because I've got grit and, you know, uh, a little overspray paint, dirt stuff in it, so I'm just going to get it cleaned out so, th so the bolts go in nice and easy. All I'm doing is chasing out. Get rid of the junk that I had. And we're going to start setting the magnets up. I found it's just as easy for me to go ahead and just start all the magnets with the bolt, washer, and a magnet. Remember, we had marked our magnets before, so it's uh, north to north, south to south, all the way around. You don't want to get your magnets reversed. Uh, another thing that I like to check is uh, see if the magnets were all about the same thickness. They do vary some, but these are all roughly about three quarters of an inch, and I've already checked all of them, so I know that at least that part, if I had one that was really thick, you're trying to shoot for that air gap in the magnet, and if I had one that was really thick, it might be a little bit problematic uh, when we start trying to set the magnet height on all of these. So I've just set our magnets up and just barely started our bolts, no, three-eighths uh, bolts that hold it in place. And the keeper, the magnet keeper and the brass spool, I found it's just easier for me to do it this way. Uh, your mileage may vary, but... And there's a... Uh, there's a uh, uh, a stamping on these plates, a little tit that sticks out flush. That goes towards the center of the flywheel. It becomes the spacer for the uh, for the magnet. And so, just get them set up, and 
you can uh, if you had a drill motor with a flat screw you can just get that started and I'm going to run that down get it started into the ring gear which sometimes you got to dink with a little bit to get it to start there that should go yeah that got it and I'll just run them down just kind of to hold it not even not even tight and I'll continue around uh, I've already checked my magnets uh, my spools they're roughly about three quarters of an inch plus or minus a few thousandths uh, again sometimes these vary quite a bit so I like to at least have something that's pretty close to the same size because again we're trying to get to that air gap and so I'll continue around here and just get get them kind of started and then we'll start uh, tightening things down and setting our magnet All right, so we got our magnet uh, keepers brass uh, the, the aluminum spool brass screw into the ring gear and our uh, keepers our magnets we set on beforehand and I'm just gonna go down here and just barely snug down these bolts all the way around And the reason that I'm going to just taking them down kind of snug enough is that I'm going to take my dead blow and I'm going to peck all of them to where they all the way seat out. Yeah, I missed a few. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and tighten them down just a little bit more. I'm just going to run, tight, run down my screws a little bit. Again, not tight, just down snug. Go all the way around. Oop, hit that one just a bit hard. And I'm going to take my little pecker and I'm going to line these keepers up with the flywheel so none of them really stick out much further than any of the other. Magnets are kind of installed. Everything's though still loose. Nothing's really tight. And I'm going to use this uh, reproduction care or Wilson uh, magnet uh, uh, magnet and field coil um, setting tool. Uh, I've got a, a main shaft that I know is square. Uh, drop the main shaft down in. With a little persuasion, put our KR Wilson tool in place and attach the uh, tighten it down with uh, the bolts that hold the flywheel on and then we'll uh, start spinning it around and seeing what our magnet heights are and try to get them all within uh, ideally would be zero uh, you guys you, you can put as much time as you want into this you can get real anal here and you know if they're within four five six thousandths of each other all the way around and you got your field coil in square uh, the air gap on here is is a, a pretty wide gap uh, I don't think it makes that much difference but so there's an adjustment on our tool and basically you revolve it around and as you can see I'm hitting uh, two places and probably got pretty good gap yeah got a pretty good gap so I'm going to start by taking down the high sides and seeing if I can get uh, this is an old brace uh, brace and bit uh, with a screwdriver in it and it ratchets and so let's get rid of that 
then I'll just kind of snug down and I'm not hitting any longer there and I'll come over here and pick this one up and just barely touching and I'm just going to start working these down and continue on until I get a place point where when I drag this around it'll just barely touch all of them and so this can get to be time consuming uh, sometimes if you got to get one down just a little bit you can give it a gentle little tap and then reseat the reseat the uh, the brass screw and I'll just keep working around finding them all until I get them down I don't know how many transmissions I've had apart, probably 60 and 50, 60 of them, and I've never seen one of these loose. Help that one a bunch. Help that one. Okay, we're real close now. I love it. I love it. I'm just going to go around and make sure that I got them all tightened down, which I should have. But we'll just verify it. So as I take my tool around now, I barely make contact with all of them. But there's one over here that's a little lower. And there ain't, there ain't three, four thousandths clearance in it. So I'm not going to worry about it. But... Basically, I make contact uh, all the way around. I'm quite happy with it. I'm going to take our tool off, turn this thing upside down, and I'm going to set, uh, punch the brass screws so okay, they so do not I'm back out. I'm going to the flywheel up, up, over, just set it down on our blocks of wood. And our brass screws that we ran through our ring gear, uh, they set a little proud, and that's fine, but I take a punch. And you just kind of come in here and catch into the threaded area and give it a couple of prick marks on each side just to hold, keep that back brass screw from backing out. So I'll set all of these down and we'll basically be done with building the uh, flywheel magnets and starter ring gear. The ring gear has a, a beveled edge and the beveled edge uh, is so the Bendix, when you start, when you uh, energize the starter, the Bendix pulls in uh, to the uh, to the ring gear. So you want that beveled edge to where the where the ring gear or the uh, uh, starter Bendix gearing will just slip into place. If you have it the other way, it's a square shoulder, and probably wouldn't work and wouldn't live very long.